Good afternoon, everyone. I am Angelina here at Pandagrams. Today we are going to be doing um, our Digital Heat Effect Solution System webinar and starting your own t-shirt business. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through a nice presentation, show you guys um, some pointers and go through some information and getting started, and then I'll show you what this machine um, can do for you and your business. All right, so how to start a t-shirt business. What do I need to do to get started? How do I start making money? What will help me make money in this business? Um, we're going to go ahead and get through this today. Um, the decorated apparel industry, it is a huge, huge market, um, looking upwards of $225 billion uh, being made now. You're able to make uh, a lot of those profits that you want to do, $100 an hour, even more. The more you're able to do, the more money you'll make. Um, your return on investment, that's something that's very important. You want to make sure um, that you're getting that. And fortunately for you, with this industry, you're able to get a really quick um, turnaround on your return. Um, recessant resistant, um, which is very, very true. Everybody's going to want personalized apparel. There's always going to be a need for uniforms. Um, so it's very, very easy to constantly keep moving with this business and not have to worry about, okay, things are really slow, I, I don't have anything to do right now with this business, there's always going to be an outlet for you. And it's a low entry investment as well, you're not going to have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get started. Um, it's a very, very low investment and um, it doesn't get much better than that. And it's easy to finance. This is an uh, industry that is well known. It's easy to get the banks to back you up and give you those loans that you need. Um, to get started because it is a lower number um, and they know how profitable it is and how quick that you're seeing um, your return. How to get started. Um, that's a great thing. You want to set up your business. You want to figure out what you want to name your business. You want to figure out what you want to do. Um, you do have to file the name of the appropriate state agency. Of course, you have your tax ID. Um, whether you become an LLC, a sole proprietor, um, and of that mix. Next is you want to figure out how to get your reseller certificate. It's very important it's so you can, um, you can get those garments that you need, for example, from Sanma or Alpha um, to be able to sell them. And no taxes as well um, when you do purchase consumable supplies. You want to set up a bank account for your business. That way you're able to put the funds in there as well as take out what you need um, as you're using and going further and further into your business. Business cards. It's very important to have business cards with your information on it because when you're getting started, you're going to want to network, go out, meet people. You want to make sure that you have a business card to speak to them and say, hey, this is who I am. This is my business. Give me a call. I'd be more than happy to get a sample out the door for you. Boom. There you go. You want to have a website. That way people can search for you and look you up, um, whether it be a landing, one landing page to another one just to get fully rounded. Um, it's very, very simple to build a nice, beautiful website so people know who you are and to share on social media. You want to come up with a business plan. What's your plan for attack? Do you want what kind of niche do you want to do? Do you want to be purely online like Etsy or eBay or do you want to have a storefront? Um, do you want to go to festivals? Whichever you prefer, whatever you want to do. And like I said, you want to make sure that you have a niche in mind. Is it schools? Is it corporations? Um, small businesses, is it one-offs that you want to do for people on Etsy. Um, you want to research your local networking groups. There's plenty on Facebook that way you're meeting and talking to people, you're getting your name known, you're getting your business known. That's how you make those relationships and get the clients to make the money that you're wanting. Establish vendor relationships, for example, Sanmar, Alpha, um, even people where you get your supplies from to do this, to do these processes. You want to make sure um, that you're building a good relationship with a strong company behind you. Um, like product fabricators, outsourcing, you want to know if you're going to want to outsource for some processes, if you're going to want to do it all in-house, um, all the stuff that you get, where do you want to get your products from? How do you want to get your products? Hey, real quick, we're getting Paula asking if these slides would be available after the presentation. Yes, Paula, they will be available after the presentation. We'd more than happy to get them for you. You want to also establish and track your goals. You want to make sure that you're reaching every goal that you set yourself for your first year in business. You want to make this amount first, and this, and this, 
Um, even time, even the amount of clients that you're bringing on, even your production, you want to speed it up, slow it down. What suits your fancy the best? Customer service, you want to make sure that you have good customer service. That is the, that's the biggest thing that I can stress to you guys. At the end of the day, you're going to have good product, but it's your customer service. That's what's going to get the clients. That's what's going to keep the clients. You want to make sure you can talk to them. Be there to answer the phone. If something goes wrong, fix it. Be the good leader. Social media, huge, like Etsy, Pinterest, eBay, all those. Um, even like a, on your yard sale groups, I'm sure they have them in your state. Um, it's big, big, big. You can post your products on there and someone's going to want it. Even not having your friends over. Um, they see the stuff. Just constantly marketing yourself. You want to partner with the right vendor. You want to make sure that you're partnering with someone that can benefit you, that has good time in business as well, that they're an expert in what they're providing you, as well as they're able to give you training. Training is super important. You don't want someone that's saying, hey, buy this, okay, have fun, and then you're left out in the middle of nowhere not knowing what you're supposed to be doing. That's why it's so important. Your support, that's a huge thing. You want to know when you call someone that they're going to answer their phone. You not someone that will say they will, and then they're not there, and then you're frustrated, angry, and you're not making the money you want to make. Warranty, that is a big deal. Just like when you purchase those big, nice cell phones or even your car. You're going to want to get warranties on your equipment because if something goes wrong, things happen with machinery. You want to make sure that you're covered. The long-term cost versus the short-term investment. A lot of business ventures that you see people going on, um, huge cost, huge, huge, huge. Um, and you're not seeing a short-term investment with a quick turnaround right away. Whereas with this, you're fortunate enough to see a quick turnaround on your profit, um, especially with our system, the Digital Heat Effect Solutions system. We see people making $150 to um, $200 an hour. There's their payment, and the rest is profit. Um, that's just one of the many examples of things you can do. I just wanted to elaborate on that as well. Um, you know, a lot of people look at the initial investment cost as solely their, their decision making. Um, look at what it's going to cost you over the first year. Add in the cost of the paper, add in what you're going to spend in that first year in business. Um, sometimes the cheaper upfront investment is not always the cheaper investment over the period of that first year in business. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you find the right process for you because there are several out there. There's screen printing, direct to garment, there's vinyl cutting and weeding, sublimation, the digital heat effect solution system many more. Um, you want to figure out what suits your fancy, what's going to go right with your niche. Why DFX? Because of the speed, the versatility, you can get a shirt done in under three minutes for a full color one-off. You can do 25 to 50 shirts per hour with one to two heat presses depending on how fast you want to move. The ease, it's super easy to move. That's why training is only an hour. Most of that is just to set up your settings. It's that simple. You click, you print, there you go. There's no screens, no pre-treating, no cutting, no weeding, no wash before you wear for your clients. You don't need any extra software. It has its own internal rip. All you need is just a graphic software you're comfortable with, such as CorelDRAW, Photoshop, Adobe. And there's no heavy maintenance other than your basic wipe down to make sure you're keeping the dust off. And it's not any, and it's no wet ink. So you're not going to have to worry about your print heads getting clogged, I'm not going to have to constantly run the machine. I can use it once, come back a year later, and it still run like new. The, versati the versatility, um, it's very important to me, and especially in this industry, you want to make sure that you can put on multiple substrates. Um, you can put it on cotton, poly, rayon, nylon, neoprene, performance wear more. Uh, you can also put it on the non-textile, such as wood, metal, cardboard, canvas, polypropylene, neoprene, metal, um, wall hangers, koozies, mouse pads, flip flops, file folders, pillows, imitations, cups, mugs, signs, you name it, you can do it. It's a low cost. Um, when you break down, you're spending two cents per square inch on a sheet of paper doing this process. The investment is less than half than uh, full color solutions since it's starting at $74.95. The, computer, the consumables, paper, and toner is two cents per square inch, and the average finished goods cost is usually um, really, really, relatively good, um, depending on what you're doing. You can see between three to four dollars, 
um, which is really, really awesome, and it depends on the shirt, of course. Profitability is super profitable. As I hit on before, a normal shirt is going to sell for about $15. As you see, like on Etsy and stuff, they're $20. Um, and so that means if you sell it for $15, you are making $10, you spent $5, you do 10 shirts at $10, there you go. Um, the average income is $150 to $200 an hour, um, which is, there you go, there's your payment if you decide to do the financing. Um, the ability to make nice profit on short runs and discount larger orders with high margins um, because you're able to do a much easier, simple process. You're not going to have to waste your time cutting the leading, bringing screens, messing with wet inks. You're not going to have to worry about time drying, nothing. It's boom, 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 done. Here's your shirt. Have a nice day. You're making more money. Money is the big important factor here. You want to make sure um, that you're ready to, because this field is full of different avenues to where you can make money. Um, because of the versatility of what you can go on, not only can you touch schools, you can do corporations, you can do um, football, baseball, um, all kinds of stuff. Etsy, Amazon, whatever that you want to advertise to, whatever you want to press on, you're able to do that with this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started in the demo. We're going to switch back to me. I'm going to go ahead and open my printer so I can show you guys the inside. Hey guys, sometimes it takes a minute or two for us to repopulate from our share screen to our camera. So if you're having any problems seeing over here for the next minute, be sure and hit the F5 button. All right, guys, is there any questions while we're waiting for our screen to transfer over? Awesome. All right, so as you see right here, we have our toner cartridges. We have our CMYW. Um, they are dry, and they're going to get you 5,000 prints before you'll need to replace them. That is a huge, huge deal. Um, nice on the inside, as you see, no wetting, no mess. Just my basic wipe down to make sure. Um, that I'm good to go. Alright, so as you see right here, I have my clear transfer sheet that I'm going to press on and it's going to come out. Now my first print is usually about 90 seconds as it's getting warmer for, warmed up for the day. Um, so as we're gonna, Joe is going to press print on the system, we have it in CorelDRAW, that's our graphic software. Um, you can use whichever one you are comfortable with. Perfect. Now, as we wait for this to go ahead and print that for us, I'm going to show you guys some examples of the different kind of objects you're eligible to do with this process. All right. So as I adjust, now my favorite one is the fact that I can do it on wood, the non, the not typical stuff that you would see at the store, um, as well as these lunch bags. So this is one flat one. We're able to press on it and make cute little letter signs. We're able to go on these lunch bags, stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to do with some of the other processes that could be a lot more expensive as well. You're also, there's also the ability to print on um, wedding invitations. This is balsa wood, a thin version, and tumblers. There is a lot of options with shirts you're able to do because it is a clear um, because it is a clear transfer sheet. You're able to put it on multiple areas and know exactly where you're pressing it. So, like for instance, this shirt I was able to press on sleeves as well as the collar. I'm able to do more than one color print. I'm also able to do metallics without having to worry about changing my ink. Just changing the sheet of paper. Here's a great question as we're going along. What, what colors of metallic can we do? Great question. Um, you can do gold metallic, red metallic. You're also able to do a blue metallic. You're able to do a purple metallic, a green metallic, and then a little bit darker 
um, to have as well. But you're not limited to that. You can do neons as well. So we have our pink and our green neon colors. That's great. Yes. And that is a distressed image, which you are also able to do with this process as well. All right, so now that our transfer, transfer went ahead and printed, we are going to move on to our marrying step. Now, how this works is I take my clear transfer sheet that just printed. I'm going to put it in my heat press with my white polymer, which gives it the tacky ability. That's only going to go on the spots that I see. 275 for 120 seconds, and then I'm going to have a full-fledged transfer ready to go. Now, to protect my transfer, I'm using parchment paper. We use that because it's cheap and reusable. You can use whatever protecting you feel comfortable with. And I have my pressure at about five. Now, what I'm going to press on is a 100% cotton black t-shirt. No pre-treating. No issues. Because with this digital heat effect solution system, I am able to press it on any substrate that is porous whether it be light or dark, without an issue. And so we're going to get a question about caps. Can we print on caps? Yes, great question. We are able to print on caps, not only the bill, but also the, um, the head part. Okay. Great question, guys. Um, you're also able to print on foam fingers and coasters and bottle holders, as I would say. <laughs> so here's the foam finger option, as well as the file folder. And you are able to do full graphic color photos like this one. And then coasters and ceramic material. So Miguel is asking us, are we using the same paper for metallic prints? Great question, Miguel. Um, we are using the same type of paper, but it's a different color. So instead of the clear transparency paper, we're using a metallic um, sheet that is the color of the metallic. There are one color prints, so you'll see the blue, the green, the red, or the gold, whichever you prefer. Um, same with the neon as well. It's just changing paper and not changing your toner. All right, do you have any other questions? We have about 18 seconds left on the heat press. So uh, Donna's asking us, how is this different, uh, or is it similar to sublimation? Great question, Donna. Um, it's not similar at all, because you're not limited as to what you can do it on. Um, this, this process, you're able to print on multiple items. And I'm not having to dye something an entire color before I can put my design on the heat press. And while she's doing that peel, I'll elaborate on that one a little bit. Um, the limitations of sublimation are to light colored garments and to polyester only. So um, it really limits the market of who you can sell to. Also, um, the, the transfers aren't as eye popping where they're, they're kind of subdued looking. So typically the sublimation is a great avenue for doing things like coffee mugs and phone cases, not so much on the decorated apparel side. All right, and as you guys can see right here, I have my ghost marks on my white polymer. We did the image for me and only put it where it was needed. Now all I'm going to do is just cut it in half and trim off my security border. We do the security border just when you're first doing it, so that way you're getting an even tension across while you're learning the process. You don't have to do it though. So we're getting a question about can we do sleeves and socks while she's trimming that out? Yeah, um, Miguel, absolutely. Um, it would absolutely adhere to a sleeve or a sock, similar to the sleeve on the uh, cuffs Angelina showed us earlier. Socks, not a problem either. Great question. Now this step in the process, I'm going to put it in my heat press for 30 seconds, and then I will take it out let the shirt cool down, and then I will do my peel which is really good for when I'm doing a bigger run. I can just throw my shirt to the side, come back to it once it's cool and I'm finished, and then press it again. All right, so while that cooks, 
next, I'm going to grab this, uh, another substrate to show you guys uh, a different example. Uh, you are able to do it on the sports-like material, um, the, shoot, the stretchy stuff that you see a lot of the team sports people wear. Stretch. And then not only that, but pillows. These are huge, um, making money on Etsy, and they're super, super, super cheap to make for you. <laughs> Do we have any questions? All right, guys. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this shirt out of my heat press, swing it around a little bit so it can cool down to do my full heel. Here's a question. I know we touched on this earlier, but um, we're going to ask again, how much is the cost in the consumables here? Great. Um, so the cost of the consumables is two cents per square inch. How we get that number is our paper cost is three dollars and thirty cents, um, and how we got that is so a box of paper is three hundred and thirty dollars. You get a hundred sheets of A and a hundred sheets of B. That's one hundred and fifty-seven square inches per sheet. Um, so that breaks down to three dollars and thirty cents. My toner is nine fifteen for a full set. I'll get five thousand prints. That's eighteen cents per print. Um, and then I go ahead and add in like a 26 cent fudge factor just in case I make a mistake. So that brings me to 374. So my total cost per page is two cents per square inch, um, which is really, really, really good. All right, so now that my shirt is cool, I'm going to do my peel. Now you're going to notice that this is going to have a bit of a shiny finish, guys, um, which is really cool. Uh, for those non-wearable uh, substrates. A lot of people like the shiny for things that they're not going to be wearing all the time, like tote bags, diva signs, stuff like that. It's cool for shirts too, but if you're going to be wearing it and washing it constantly, the matte finish is where you're going to be. And I'll show you guys. It's just another 30 seconds in my heat pack. So guys, what you're seeing here is this whole process, if we went from start to finish on a one-off, from the time I hit the print button, um, it's about two minutes for the marrying process, 30-second application, 15 to 30 seconds finish. So you're about three minutes start to finish for a one-off that you could produce while your customer's waiting. Uh, so a super easy solution to quickly provide a one-off and full-color solutions. And uh, the ability to do 25 to 50 shirts per hour with a, one or two heat presses. And you're able to do samples without having to turn them away. Um, I know personally from when I was doing the production that my boss wouldn't do samples because it wasn't cost effective um, to do them. But now I'm doing this, using this equipment, I'm able to do samples for my clients. So I'm making more sales because they're able to see their product before I fully do a whole production run on it for them. So it, it's really nice that it gives me more business opportunity and I get more time to do other things than constantly break my back and make ten dollars an hour cutting a reading. All right. So now I have a full fledged graphic t-shirt that is ready to go in my client's hand. And guys, hopefully it's picking up on camera, but um, this is an example that you're seeing color fades that are some subtle going from your yellows to greens. Um, these are going to be things that are going to be hard to replicate in a lot of other processes out here, especially with some of the thin lines, the eye popping white. So uh, great product, great solution, fast, easy, and um, keep those questions coming. Hey Joe, Paula has a question for you. She's saying, so in order to make this work, we would need the heat press and the copier. If so, what is the major difference in the printer versus a regular inkjet printer and just use the special paper? Sure, Paula. I'd be happy to answer that for you. Um, this is not an inkjet. Uh, there are no wet inks in our process. We got away from those as, you know, you can get into clogging issues. Um, the magic with ours is that we have a white toner and it's all printed electromagnetically. As soon as I hit print from whatever program I'm printing from, it's going to do all my color separations, all my um, white ink management. I'm not having to do a lot of work going into it. I hit the print button, I pull off the result, I press it to my shirt, and I put the money in my pocket. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. I see one here for you. Um, explain to Donna what the hand feels like. Donna, great question. Um, the hand feels a lot like DTG, um, I've been told, as well as kind of some screen printing. 
it's nice and smooth in the shirt. You won't feel it because um, there is breaks in the yarn. So it's going to go into the shirt like another process instead of like vinyl. It's not going to be heavy on the shirt. Uh, it's going to be nice and smooth. And talk, talk a second about washability. I see uh, Miguel was asking about the washability. Great question. You're going to get between 50 to 60 washes um, before you'll see any real wear and tear, given you don't wash your shirt every day like crazy. You wash it once a week, you should have it for about two years. Fantastic. Awesome. Can Done. you elaborate on the warranty for us? Great. You're going to get a two-year warranty um, with not only us, but also with Oki. Uh, which is really beneficial to you, so you'll know someone will be there to help you out um, get you back. That's a big deal, guys, because a lot of uh, the other people that are selling this type of printer out there, number one, they don't have our our time in business doing this, the expertise. Um, a lot of them are offering starter sets of toner instead of full sets, and they're maybe giving you a one-year warranty. That two-year with Panagrams and Oki is a big deal because we're your first tier support. If something happens where we need to send out a tech, you have that available through Oki for two years. Where um, you're not having to uh, box up your printer, mail it back in. We're there to help you on site as well. Any other questions as uh, we're getting ready to wrap up here in the next few minutes? Guys, there's 45 of you. I know there's questions. <laughs> uh, here's a question on the paper. How much is the paper? I missed that answer, Miguel. Not a problem. Um, the paper is four ninety a box, um, given you don't do our uh, paper savers club or a bulk or a bulk order of paper. Um, we'll be more than happy to go over pricing and such with you um, after this. You can tell them, you know, for, for those viewers today we are able to get down to the three thirty a box that she mentioned earlier. That's a huge savings in the market. Um, so that's gonna allow you to make more money in your pocket. Paul is asking, what equipment would you use to do mugs, glass, etc.? Um, you would use, you would just see that you would need a heat press that is eligible to fit around a mug um, to go ahead and do that and some heat resistant tape. And uh, we find uh, how much is the equipment to start up? You know, you're looking at anywhere to book in it, maybe from 7,500 to, to 10,000 if you don't have a heat press already and uh, to get the full package. So, um, and here's a great question. Someone's asking about down payments. Um, and financing. Let's answer that question. Great question. Um, we actually are having a special going on until Thursday. Um, you are able to get a full set of toner um, and the 330 box as well as a 90 day deferred program. So you would be eligible to not have any payments as long as your credit is good, above 600, uh, no payments until March, as well as a complete tax write off for this equipment. Um, so it's really good. It does go based off your credit, so as long as you're above 600, um, your payments can be anywhere between 250 and 300. And you know, we are able to help some people with more challenging credits, even if the credit score is it up, uh, up at that level. Uh, believe it or not, we do have options for you, maybe not the 90 day deferred, but um, to get you up and running in the business and making money. And um, definitely willing to help anybody out if they are looking to finance. Of course. All right, is there any other questions, guys, before we wrap it up today? Here's a question. How much is the heat press behind you? Great question. This one is $2,100. Um, it's like the Cadillac. I like it. It's the swing away the plot drawer, so I'm not going to have any more scars on my hands from my clamp press. Um, the heat is nice and even. The pull out drawer is great, and it's completely digital. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Jenna, for the feedback, and thank you as well, Johnson. <laughs> and again, go over one last time. Someone's asking about how much can I make, so um, touch on that again for us. You could be making anywhere between $150 to $200 an hour using this equipment because of how cost-effective it is, not to mention how item-time consuming it is, so you can take on more production because you're able to get through things faster and not beat your competition um, using this system with full-color, vibrant prints. Absolutely, and we have a lot of customers that have upgraded from their standard, you know, uh, one color cut vinyl solutions where they're they're cutting, they're weeding, they're frustrated, they're maybe making ten dollars an hour. We we get excited to give those people a nice raise up to that hundred fifty to two hundred dollars per hour. So uh, we'd love to do the same for you if that's the boat you're in. We'd love to help you out, get you up and running with this with uh, a fifty year old business that has over thirteen thousand customers uh, placed in business successfully to date, like Panagrams and. Um, our support, our training, our warranty are going to be second to none in the industry. 
we look forward to helping you. It looks like um, we've exhausted the questions out there. So we're going to go ahead, unless there's any more, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. And uh, we do thank everybody for their time. You should be hearing um, from our account management team here, check in with you after today's webinar and see what else we can do to help you out. And um, as requested, we will be sending out a copy of the slide presentation so you guys can view that again at your leisure. Um, and once again, everyone, I am Angelina here at Pentagrams. Um, and if you are